Can we give the Lord another praise for our children? And what you saw on the PowerPoint was our children, and they were getting taught in their classes in children's church and family training hour in Sunday school. So I encourage you to bring your children uh, to the ministries of this church because they're going on just for you folks, amen, and for your family, and you'll be blessed by them, amen. It's a good thing. Praise the Lord. Got a lot of good things happening, and we thank the Lord for it. Next Sunday is going to be our uh, Pentecost Sunday, and uh, we're going to uh, be focusing on that on the Sunday morning and on the Sunday night of next Sunday will be the Reggie Sadler Singers. And uh, this is a powerfully anointed singing group, uh, and uh, you'll be blessed by them. Come and be with us. We're going to have a great time all day that day. And then two weeks from today will be the 83rd church anniversary of the South Castonia Church of God. And so we'll be uh, just celebrating what God's done in the church and having a, a message on worshiping the Lord and the full gospel that Sunday as well. And I think I've got Brother Loftus uh, talked into coming. He is, uh, didn't take much. And uh, he's going to be with us that night to minister to us. And between he and I, we cover half of those 83 uh, years of pastoring here at the church. So we're going to have a great day in the Lord. I want you to plan on coming and being with us as we worship the Lord. How many of you know Jesus is the only hope for this world? Anybody know he's the only one going to get you and me through this world? Amen. And praise God, I believe that's why you're here. He is the answer. As I say a lot, Jesus is the solution to our pollution, amen. He'll get us through it all, amen, and we give God praise for that, amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 3, 1 Kings chapter 3. I want to share a few things from the Word of God this morning. Uh, I've got three points in my message and no sub-points, just three points I want to share with you from one of the most unusual Mother's Day text that you're going to probably hear. You wouldn't expect to see a Mother's Day text from where we're going, but I want to go to that. But before I do, I want to share a few things with you uh, that applies to Mother's Day. Let's go to that. Sister Lynn has helped me so much here. Look at this. Study by attorney Michael Minton on the monetary value of a wife, may I say mother's, services in the home. Look at this. She is chauffeur, help me, gardener, family counselor. How many have ever been counseled by your mother? Amen. Count, not canceled, counseled, <laughs> counseled. All right. Maintenance worker, what else? Cleaning woman, housekeeper, cook, errand runner, bookkeeper, interior decorator, caterer, dietitian, secretary, hostess, and the list goes on, don't it? list goes on. Look what he said. If you were to apply that to the workplace today, he came up that she would be, according to per hour and through the week, she would be at least minimum worth $985 per week. That's $51,220 a year. I would not encourage any mother to try to collect. <laughs> Amen. But I would tell you who do know your mothers and they're still with you that you need to let them know how valuable they are to you. Can I get a witness somewhere? Amen. How valuable they are. Amen. A couple other observations from the University of Michigan Nationwide Survey asked thousands of girls, thousands of girls between the ages of 11 and 18 what they would like to be in adult life. Look at this answer. 80%. Express the desire to be like their mothers. You make an impact. Whether you know it or not, you make an impact on your children. Now, I think I've got what, uh, last point there, it has been said that no other force in the life of a son is as strong as the influence of a mother. Big time. Mothers are special. Fathers are special in their own way. But mothers have that specialty that only God can put together. And he put it in the mother. And uh, a, motherly, a motherly love is the closest thing you can compare to the love of God and the love of Jesus because it is an unqualified love, unconditional love. Mothers love us when we don't deserve to be loved. Amen. I'm speaking for myself. Amen. 
They raise us. They carry us. They take care of us. They put up with us. They know we're young, immature. We, they know we're growing up. They're trying to teach us. They're trying to train us. So they overlook all that other stuff. They'll laugh with us, cry with us, shout with us, rejoice with us, beat us every now and then when we need it. Mine did, and it paid off, and I probably needed it more than what I got. But they help us to discipline us and carry us along the way. Amen. Mothers are so special. And I've got this message here I want to share with you. about this. I had one other thing I was going to share with you about a fella that wrote the following lament to his wife on Mother's Day. M is for the mink coat you want, dear. O is for the opal ring you crave. T is for the tiny car you'd love, my sweet. H is for the hat that makes you rave. E is for the earrings you admire, love. R is for the rug on which you tread. Put them all together, they spell bankrupt. So I'm giving you this handkerchief instead. We'd love to give them what we really feel in our heart, that great love for all that they mean to us. And we appreciate all of you. And if I start calling names, I'll miss some. Some of you had not been here uh, perhaps before, some maybe once or twice. Some of you are frequently here on these special days with your family. Thank you all for being here. And we're going to focus on this message here. I want to share a few things with you from this text. Go with me, as I said, to 1 Kings 3, verses 16 through 28. Two mothers in this text, two mothers, and they're fighting over one child. Watch what happens here. Read out loud with me if you'd like. Then came there two women that were harlots. Yes, that were harlots. Look at this. I told you it's the most unusual mother's text you're going to find here. But anyhow, that were harlots unto the king, King Solomon, and stood before him. And the one woman said, O oh my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also. And we were together, there was no stranger with us in the house, save the two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. Then said the king, The one saith, This is my son that liveth, and thy son is the dead. The other saith, Nay, but thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, Watch this, King Solomon, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two and give half to the one and half to the other. Then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king. For her bowels yearned upon her son. And she said, O my Lord, give her the living child and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. Wise man, wasn't he? There's a mother's love right there to preserve the life of the child and the welfare of the child. She was willing to let the child be taken by another woman rather than see the child killed. This is the love of a mother who will do anything for her offspring. We see that in the wildlife, and you can see that if you go to the mountains and you go up through Cage Cove or some of those areas where the bears are. They say if they got cubs, even if they don't have cubs, keep your distance. 
But if they've got cubs, you better be especially at a good distance because they will protect those little ones. And you've seen that with other animals as well. And if it's true in the wildlife, how much more in the human life, amen, where the souls are involved and the compassion is there and the deliverance by the mother for the children is there. Uh, Several things I saw here, but I'm going to share three things with you in the next few minutes. And I'm entitling this message, Morals from Motherhood. Morals from motherhood. There are three things in this Bible lesson, which is a classic lesson, that can tell us something about the morals of motherhood. But don't let me keep it there. I'm not just keeping it there. The same morals we're going to see for these mothers, or the, the true mother here, is, the, is something we can relate to every one of us men and women who are not mothers and to children and to all of us. So we got lessons that goes to all of us. So I want to show you what the mother's moral is, and then I want to relate it to everybody so you'll understand where we're coming from on this. So let's, let's look at this and see. First lesson of morals from motherhood in this text is there is no such thing as a perfect mother. And I'm not saying this to put down motherhood. I'm saying this to exalt motherhood. Because everybody has their problems. And every one of us here today have given our mothers a fit at one time or another. Now, I know some of you are not going to agree with that, but I'm going to ask your mother. I believe she'll tell a different story. Amen. But we all do that. There is no such thing as a perfect mother, but I'm saying that to build you up. Because this is, this is important as we begin to realize that mothers give themselves an awful hard time when we children don't act and behave the way they taught us and brought us up. When we do things as youth, teenagers, young adults, adults, and they just cannot understand. They know they taught us better than this. And why we're acting as crazy as we are, they wonder, is that really my child? Amen. And they begin to wonder at times. But They know that we are their children, and they love us, and in spite of everything that we've done wrong and and every mistake and every time we fell on our face, they loved us anyhow. And if they knew God at all, they prayed for us no matter what. I've been with mothers in a lot of difficult situations when students, I shouldn't say students, children, and then the children as they grew up, and children that rebelled against their parents, and children that did things that, that you know, was, was just heartbreaking to the mother. But those mothers never gave up on their children, never gave up on them. They kept praying and interceding and believing and talked to me about, let's keep praying, and we'd keep praying until we see God do a turnaround and help them somehow. And that makes no difference. When I was growing up, before I became a minister, and I had some friends that got in some trouble and landed in jail. And I, I was close to those families. Some of them I grew up with in the neighborhood and knew. I've, I've, since then, I've preached those mothers' funerals. They had me come and preach their funerals. And, and I've, I've come back, but I've known them. But I'd talk to the mothers, and I'd, I'd say, you know, I'd look at them, and I would hear them. I didn't really think. I thought, he never should have done it. He did this mess. Now he's in jail. In my mind, I'm saying, as much as I love him, he's getting what he deserved. And I'm hearing that mother talk about how much she loved him and how much she cared for him and uh, how she could help get him out and all these kinds of things. And going. And I'm thinking, what a love this woman has for her son. And no matter how bad they are, you hear it on the news. We're hearing it every day. We're hearing more and more of people killing people and people doing things that's destructive and harmful to other people and families. And in the whole process, we're hearing mothers say, I don't agree with the wrong they did, but that's still my child. Can I get a witness somewhere? That's my child. And let me tell you, every time you think somebody ought to be pitched into the lake of fire because of something they said or did to society, to your world, to you, to your family, to things that really cut your heart and broke you and made life uncomfortable to say the least for you, remember that person also has a mother. That person also has a father. That person may have a brother or sister. And you know that's how God's looking at us. 
He's looking at us all as his family. And he wants all of us to be the children of God that are born again and a part of the family of God. But if you're not careful, you can let this old carnal nature get built up into you to where you think everything is right and wrong, black and white, and everything is not right. They all need to be thrown in the lake of fire. God, open the earth, swallow them up, get rid of all the people doing everything. But God so loved the world. He's after souls to get them saved. And you and I, had it not been for the grace of God and probably a good mother and father, we would have been doing the things that we are upset with others for doing. Come on now. And this is is where we are. I'm telling you, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. And when we get to heaven, the ground's a level there as well by the grace of God. But we need to realize where we came from and where we are. There's no such thing as a perfect mother because there's no such thing as a perfect father because there's no such thing as a perfect child. But God made it possible for us to live with one another by his amazing grace. There are no such thing or there is no such thing as a perfect person or perfect people. And mothers... I'm trying to get something across to you this morning as part of this. Don't be so hard on yourselves when your children don't behave the way you brought them up. Don't be so hard on Remember, you do your part, but they've got to make their own decisions. And you've given them the equipment if you brought them up in church and taught them the Word of God and showed them how to pray. Then you've given them the resources they need to have life, abundant life, and eternal life, but they've got to make that decision. And they've got to choose between right and wrong. And they've got to take a stand. And this is part of our our upbringing and the established principles of foundations for life. And then they go forward. You love them, you pray for them, and you still witness to them if they're not living right. You still let them know, I love you, but I want you to go to heaven with me. Come on now. We want the family to be together in heaven. So the two mothers in this story were what? Harlots, prostitutes. The babies were obviously conceived under sinful circumstances. And and Solomon, king over the nation of Israel, God's people, is questioned as to whether he would even take time to listen to two prostitutes fussing over a baby. Why would he even waste time with them? Because God loved those women and God loves that baby that they're fussing over. He loves everybody. So here we are. And God loves the sinful men that were involved in the conception of these children. The church stands for morality, what is right and what is wrong, just like God is holy. But we also know God has compassion and forgiveness which is something the church forgets sometime, which is something the church forgets sometime, which is something the church forgets sometimes. Because if God hadn't saved us, we'd have been in the same mess. And I guarantee you, the rest of us, those of us that are saved, I guarantee you we wouldn't want everybody to know everything God did forgive us of. So we need to remember that we are at the mercy of God We're born in sin, and then we add to it until we give our hearts to the Lord. But once you confess your sins, ask Jesus to forgive you, come into your heart, be your Lord and Savior, then our goal is to get to heaven. Our goal is to stay in fellowship with God. Our goal is to stay in church and to worship and serve the Lord. But our goal is not to get caught up in the world and to yield to the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life and go against everything we know God stands for. You're willfully sinning, and at that point, God says, stop, repent, straighten up, and get back on the road to heaven. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. We still believe in living right because God said that's the way to heaven, and we don't have to worry about it on our own. We got somebody that will help us that's more powerful than mom, more powerful than dad, more powerful than the pastor, more powerful than the church. His name is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the Savior, the Redeemer, and the Deliverer. He sent us the Comforter, the Counselor. He give it all to us. Amen. Somebody give him a praise right there if you know who I'm talking about. Amen. 
Solomon was concerned about these two women because he was concerned about them and that child. And we see how Jesus has been concerned for us and that he loved us so much. He came into the world and laid his life down for us that we might have salvation. No matter how much we did wrong, no matter how much we disobeyed the Father in heaven as well as mom and dad on earth, no matter how much we defied the laws of the land and even the laws of nature, God said, if you'll come unto me, Jesus said, if you'll come unto me, I'll forgive you of your sins, I'll clean you up, I'll regenerate you, give you a new life, and you can start all over, no matter what your age, no matter where you are, no matter what's going on, he'll clean up the, the mess in your life and make a blessing out of it, and you can have life and that abundant life at that and be able to go to heaven when he calls for you. If you believe it, say amen. My Lord, he put it all together for us. Amen. These women were not living up to God's ideals, yet God loves them. God loves them. And God loves us no matter what our troubles are, what our problems are, what our history is, or whatever has been going on in our life. God loves us. And so does a mother love her children regardless of what's going on. Amen. Amen. And amen. Praise God. He is good to us. The pressures that moms have is really strong. And we've got to look at that and consider that. Eve, look at this. Eve, Mother Eve. She was blamed for the original sin. And she had one son who killed the other son, his brother. Hagar, Abraham's handmaiden, had a son by him. And Abraham, instructed by the Lord, sent her and the boy away from the camp on their own, and they were left in the wilderness, in the desert, to die. Jochebed was the mother of Moses. The Egyptians were killing all the male Hebrews, and she took her child and put him, Moses, in a basket and put it in the river and let it float. In order to save that child, she risked the child's life. She took a step of faith and let it go. And look how God rescued it by Pharaoh's own daughter and how God used Moses. When God's got a plan for you, I'm going to tell you, God's going to work it out. What he starts, he will finish, and he'll put it together for you. The Lord knows what he's doing, and he knows how to keep it together. And if you'll see things like this, you'll see how mothers had a lot of pressure on them and took some steps. You and I as children, thinking of our mothers, have no idea the pressures they were under to do the things they did for you and me to get where we are today. We have no idea the many hours of prayer, the many hours up through the night, the sacrifices they made in, in their own personal lives in order for us to have what we want and in order for us to get what we need. Jesus knows about that even more so. For he came and gave everything so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. How about uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus? No room for her in the end. See, Jesus coming is what brought all that about. Uh, had to go to Bethlehem. Had to uh, be in the, in the end there. And then uh, born in a manger. Uh, then uh, flee to Egypt to escape the wrath of Herod. Uh, they couldn't even go to church without him losing Jesus in the synagogue. That's another message i got to work on. Great Lord. Mary and Joseph went to the Jerusalem. Jesus got in a debate with the, with the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin, particularly the Pharisees, and they left and didn't even miss him for three days. I believe I'd miss my child in one day. They went three days, I believe the Bible said, before they missed him, turned around, went back and found him here right where they'd left him. But thank God he was in church. Hey, Amen. Thank God he was in church. Thank God he was in church. So he put it together that way. Oh, mothers are under a lot of pressure. So we see a lot of these things happening. Second moral, I want you to just, just think about that because no one is perfect. And we need to realize that. No one is perfect. Secondly, God has answers for a mother's problems. God has answers. Solomon, God gave him wisdom. And they went to Solomon, and God worked through him to give a solution to their problem. God has a solution to every problem in your life. Mothers, what you have now, what you're going to have in the future, God has a solution for every problem that we have. Brothers, 
Those who are not mothers that are in the house, I want you to know God's got a solution to every problem in your life right now. Right now. He has the solution. God has answers for all your problems. He is ready to and able to assist you with those if you will pour your heart out in faith and call on him. He's got the wisdom to get you through all the parenting He's got you wisdom to get through all of your issues you've got battling in your mind and nerves and life. God has it. He's got it handwritten in black and red and white in the Bible. And he's got it by the Holy Ghost when you allow the Spirit to work on your mind and your heart and you seek him with all your heart in prayer and fasting. God will talk to you and will give you direction. God is able and ready to respond to your faith and to your prayers. And if ever we needed help today in raising our families, this is it. This is it. If we don't get the Bible and Christianity into the lives of our young people, it won't be much longer, and the church, as we know it as a Christian church, will have faded dramatically. The Muslims are outdoing us. Other religions are are heavy into other areas. And this is the only one that's real. This is the only one that works. This is the only one that has a true living God. This is the only one that has a true living Savior. This is the only one who has a true living Bible that will work in our lives and do what God said. When you call on the God of this Bible, you'll find out he's on the throne. When you call on Jesus, you'll find out he's alive and well. When you call on the Lord, you'll feel his presence. He's alive, he's well, he's functioning, he's working, and he's ministering, and he's ready to do it. God has answers for everything you're going through today. I don't know about you. My mom and dad have gone on to be with the Lord, but I can tell you this. I would love to, and it's hit my mind several times over the past three years. I would love to just go back to the home place and hear mom rattling around in the kitchen, hopefully baking some fried apple pies, and go sit in the living room with Dad and just sit there, and it didn't make a bit of difference whether we talked or not, just to be there with them. I'd love to have that again. I'd love to have that again. But the cycle of life goes on, and we move on. While you've got your parents, spend time with them. You're going to regret it if you don't. You're going to regret it if you don't. Children, no matter what age your parents are, they want you. They want you to spend time with them. They want you to be there for them. Take time. They sacrifice for you. You sacrifice for them. Your busy, hectic lifestyle can be put on hold if you try. Can I say that again? Your busy, hectic life schedule can be put on hold because I found out people do what they want to do. Amen. If that's true, tell somebody around you that's the truth. We do what we want to do. We do what we want to do. And you need to do that for your parents. Amen. You need to do that. So you need to realize some of these things. There is a solution for every problem, and God's got it just like mom. I saw something the other day. It said uh, it's like the mom who was tucking her small boy into bed one summer night during a violent thunderstorm. She was about to turn out the light when he asked in a tremble in his voice, Mommy, will you sleep with me tonight? Mother smiled and gave him a reassuring hug and said, I can't, dear. I have to go sleep with your dad. A long silence was broken at last by his shaky little voice, the big sissy. (laughs) Mothers take care of us no matter what. Amen. Mothers take care of us no matter what. They just keep going on and doing what we have. Third moral, and I'll wrap it up with this. But the, the third moral, and there's a lot more, but just three of them I wanted to share with you and uh, uh, to let us know exactly what, what, what we can learn from mothers, that there is no such person as a perfect person, be it mother or otherwise. So we need to realize that. None of us are perfect. As long as we do the best we can according to God's word, then we can live with that. And you need to realize that, mothers, and take a sigh of relief and and thank God you was able to do what you could do and realize they got to answer for themselves and the decisions to make. Secondly, God answers. God has answers for a mother's problems, and God's got answers for every one of our problems. If we'll just take time 
out of their crazy schedule and talk to God about it and investigate his word, you'll find the solution to your pollution. Amen. Number three, there is nothing like a mother's love. That's the third moral. And I wanted to bring this out because there is nothing like a mother's love. Think about this. Would you be willing to carry somebody around on your body for nine months? She loved us enough to carry us for nine months. Think about it. Nine months. 